fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! I'm Silver! Many events happened to terrorize the settlers and ranchers in the territory surrounding Laredo. A brazen gang of outlaws, led by a ruthless bandit chief from across the border, Juan Moros, struck time and again, yet always managed to escape the law. The first move by the gang that had attracted attention was a midday raid on the Laredo bank when the sheriff himself was drawing out money at the teller's window. There you are, Sheriff. Three hundred dollars. Yes, thanks, Dave. I'm going to buy a mighty fine palomino with this. That's fine. <laughs> You get them at a bargain price? Yep, sure am. <laughs> I'll tell you all about it sometime when there aren't other folks lined up behind me waiting to get here to your window. Oh, hurry on our car, Senor Sheriff. Well, that's nice of you, mister. <laughs> but I reckon you and those other armies aren't interested in hearing about how I bargain for a horse. <laughs> no, but we are most interested in the money you have to pay for. Wait a second. Hey, you can't... God. Say, what's that? We got all the others covered, Juan. Oh, no. Have the men got their bank money? Hey, Sheriff, it's a bank holder. Oh, there's hey, six of them. And they all got guns, not to mention my shavings money. See, si, senor, and I also have a gun at your back. I'll take your gun now. By thunder, this is the most brazen thing that's ever happened. You can't get away with a thing like this in broad daylight. But we are getting away with it. My men are about finished back there getting the bank money. All right, Wad, we got everything. Good, very good. Now, Dusty, you and the men put the sheriff and the others in the vault. We're safekeeping, huh? <laughs> Come on, Sheriff. Get moving. Now, see here. This is going too Go far. Go with him quickly, Savvy. All right, all right. All right, in the vault. Yeah, we're ready to leave now, Juan. Bueno, now we stroll out and get to our horses. Come along, senores. The next move made by Juan Moros and his gang was against a special stage from Corpus Christi, bringing not only a shipment of new paper money to the Laredo Bank, but also carrying as a passenger a rear admiral of the United States Navy, who was going from his ship in Corpus Christi Bay to Fort McIntosh near Laredo, a distance of about 125 miles. The admiral, accompanied by two aides, was going for a special conference with a fort commandant concerning contraband being brought into the country by boat. At the last stage way station, he had changed into a dress uniform with plumed hat for the expected reception at the fort. The raid by Juan and his gang was entirely unexpected. I hope we soon reach the fort. I much prefer the rocking of a ship to the infernal pumping of this vehicle. I agree with you, sir. We'll soon be done with this rough riding, Mr. Great day, sir. We've met outlaws. Outlaws, eh? 
They said they would give him a fight if that's what they would. Yes, sir. Distinguished passengers in the court. Reach you One of my men is at the other door, senor, and one at the small back window. You and your gunmen won't get away with this. We are officers of the United States Navy. I and my men are standing here at the coach only as a precaution, senor, while the others obtain a certain money box from the boat of the stage. With a further precaution, I shall unload your guns. Senores, pass them to me, please. I'll be hanged. We shall shoot to kill, senor. <laughs> You've got the best ever since Have to do what he says. Yes, sir. Here's mine. And mine. Gracias, senores. There. Now I return them to you here. Yeah. Uh, you'll be caught and hanged. We'll, we'll report this to the fort. So? The exploits of Juan Moros and his men have already been reported to the fort, senores. We're ready to leave, Juan. Tell him in the mount. You see, senor admiral, I have not disturbed you much, nor have I robbed you. But there is one thing that has taken my fancy, senor. I must have that groomed hat you wear. My dress hat? Very Sunday before I give you that. A hat? Or a bullet, senor, take your choice. You, uh, you'd better give it to him, sir. Here, bless your ticket. Gracias, senor admiral. See, I put it on. So, now I give you the sombrero worn by the great Juan Moros. There. No, you... <laughs> it's an expensive sombrero, senor. And a fair exchange is not a robbery, no? Adios, senor. Let us leave here under the... <laughs> From that time on, Juan always wore the Admiral's plumed hat when leading his gang on a raid. And the sight of it brought fear to those who saw it, for they knew it meant trouble. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had heard of the notorious Juan and the plumed hat. And they headed south along the river trail toward Laredo. The masked man waited in a secluded grove while Tonto entered town to get a few supplies, but especially to try to get recent news of Juan Moros. Later, as the two men left the grove and rode back toward their camp, Tonto told what he had learned. Now, me go to store, not here talk of Moros, then me go to cafe. You heard something about him there? Well, at first, men talk of cattle, crops. Me think maybe me leave. Then fellow with whiskers come in. When someone speak of Morris, he wait. This. Ah, Jed. How's the stage driving business yeah. these days? Fine, fine. Have any more holdups lately, Jed? Didn't bring in any more Navy men from Corpus Christi, did yeah. you? No. <laughs> oh, I reckon I was lucky that time to have him with me, though. One Moros was so interested in that plumed hat, he didn't pay any attention to me. Moros sure has made that plumed hat famous since then. Yeah, I guess he has, all right. I reckon since the troopers from the fort near here refused to give up hunting for him, Moros has finally decided to move to safer ground. Fact is, I haven't heard any holdups or killings in this vicinity by Moros and his gang lately. No, no, no. Because he isn't operating around here anymore. A few days ago, before I drove out of Corpus Christi, I heard Moros pulled a hold up on a trail about 20 miles southwest of there. The trail that follows the coastline down to Brownsville. Oh, so he's operating down that way now, huh? Well, we're sure glad of that. Yeah, but I get to feel a little nervous when I travel along the trail where it gets close to Corpus Christi. You know, meeting Moros in this cutthroat gang once is enough for me. So Moros and his men are down that way now. Ah. The break camp at dawn, Tonto, and head south to that coastline trail. Let's get a move on. Come on, Come on. The Lone Ranger and Tonto finally reached the coast trail at a point where it ran close to the Laguna Madre, a stretch of water between the coast and the line of sandy islands separating the coastline from the gulf. The two men headed northeast toward Corpus Christi, and at dusk pitched camp in a grove on a low bluff overlooking the water. The Lone Ranger estimated they were about 20 miles or so from the town, and somewhere near the place where Moros and his gang recently pulled the holdup. That night after eating, the Lone Ranger and Tonto stood looking out over the water from the bluff. Most of the land in this territory near the coast is low and swampy, Tonto. It wouldn't afford many places for outlaws to have a hideout. Isn't that right, Kimosabe? And at plenty clear night, it's easy to see water or gulf beyond islands. Look, Kimasabi, 
Me think me see something moving in water far up lagoon. Uh, there's something there. Out of the bright moonlight, I can't make it out. Get the telescope for my saddlebag, Tonto. Uh, you got it. In a moment, Tonto returned with a strong telescope, and the Lone Ranger focused it on the object they had seen. After studying the object a couple of moments, the Lone Ranger spoke. That's a rowboat, Tonto. There's several men in it, but I can't make out how many. Heading for the island out there. You not think anyone live on island? I'm sure no one does. Those islands are narrow and sandy. There are some trees and underbrush on the island opposite here, but most of the others are completely barren. Let's ride up along the trail and see if we can find the place where that boat left the shore. Oh, that's a good idea. The Lone Ranger and Toto rode up the coast trail for some distance. Then they pulled their horses to a slow pace. Easy, steady, 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 steady. steady. We must be near the point from which that boat put out, Toto. That right. Look closely for fresh marks along the trail that might turn off towards the beach. Ah. For a short distance, the two men rode along in silence, with their eyes searching the ground. Suddenly, Toto spoke. Wait, Kim, it's up here. Look, oh. Oh. look. Meet the fresh hoof marks crossing trail. Them come from swampy land. Yonder. Yes, and they head off toward the beach. We'll follow and see where they go. Come on, Toto. Get up to count. Here and men dismounted. Ah. And them hoof marks go along the beach to left. Someone evidently led them away. We'll find out where those marks lead to later. Let's walk closer to the water. Yes. The boat put off from here. There's the mark where it was drawn up on the sand. Isn't that right? Boat not in sight now. I know. Let's go back now and trail those horses. The Lone Ranger and Toto found that the hoof marks went along the beach a short distance, then turned back and recrossed the trail into the swamp land in shore. They drew rain where the trail of the horses entered the swamp. Oh, 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 oh. oh trail lost. After it crossed into swamp, you must have Yes. The men who used those horses must know a safe way through there. It would be dangerous for us to try. That right. What do you think it all means? Otto, I've decided Moros and his gang own those horses. Moros? Yes. I'd say the gang have a hideout, either in the swamp or out on that island. So if the hideout camp is in the swamp, I don't understand why they bothered to row over the island at all. Ah. Unless them have bigger boat on the other side of the island... To use for getaway if posse find hideout in swamp. Maybe a large boat does put it on the other side of the island, Toto. That gives me the idea that Moros might be responsible for the contraband being sneaked into Texas. I think we'll have a showdown with Juan Moros and his gang sooner than we expected. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue. After deciding that the trail they had found was that of Moros and his gang, the Lone Ranger and Toto returned to their camp on the bluff. Dawn was breaking when the Lone Ranger, who was on watch, woke Toto. Toto. Uh, you wake, Kimisabi. The boat is putting out from the island. Oh. 
we get to place where a boat come in. Yes, but we'll have to hurry. Let's get going. He's got to see for that. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. A short time later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto arrived at the place where the hoof marks crossed the trail. They rode a short distance in toward the beach. Oh, sir, oh, yes. well, right. Then dismounted and proceeded on foot, moving cautiously through the underbrush. When they reached the edge of the tall underbrush, the Lone Ranger signaled for a halt. There's a horseman, Tonto. He's brought five saddle horses here to meet that rowboat. Ah, the rowboat's still a long way out from shore. The man who brought the horses is watching the boat. We'll try to sneak up and get the drop on him. Come on. Uh-huh. Moving cautiously, the two men started toward the cabby of horses. The man sitting in the saddle didn't know of their approach until they were only a few yards away. Then the masked man spoke sharply. Reach and don't move. What? Get off your horse. Holy mackerel, a masked owl boat. I said dismount. All right, all right. We'll take him out where we left our horses, Tonto. Uh, hold on, I don't get this. You will. I'll take your gun first. Now start walking. Bring those horses, Toto. Yeah, you get them. With Toto bringing up the rear with the horses, the Lone Ranger walked the man back to the grove where they had left Silver and Scout. After tying up the outlaw, they secured the horses, then retraced their steps to the edge of the undergrowth near the beach. You think maybe men in boats see horses leave? No. I think they were too far out to notice. They stay hidden here at the edge of the brush until they land. <laughs> Meantime, the men in the rowboat moved slowly across the lagoon. Juan Moros, sitting in the stern of the boat facing the beach, had been busy telling the men about his plans for a robbery. When he finished talking, they were about 200 yards from the shore. Juan looked up, scanning the beach. Then he spoke sharply. Where's the notice? Quit rowing. Uh, what's the matter, Juan? The horses, they're not there. Hey, Juan's right. Maybe Gil's late this morning. Gil has never been late. He knows better than that. Well, what do you make of it, then? That I cannot say, Dusty, but we are not going to land. Turn the boat around and head back to the island pronto. You mean you think something's happened? You think maybe we'd be going into a trap, Juan? See, si, that's exactly what I think. We're going back. Then what? The ship which has bring the contraband to the other side of the island will wait until tonight to set sail. Well, what's it got to do with us? We shall go on board and have it take us to Brownsville. There we get more horses. What about Gil? He must look out for himself. If nothing has happened, we meet him later. Now start rowing toward the island. <laughs> Waiting in their hiding place on shore, the Lone Ranger and Tonto saw the rowboat turn around and head back toward the island. Tonto, they turned around. They're going back. Ah. Got suspicious, I guess. Ah. What we do? They must have some way to leave that island from the other side. I'm going to try to find a way to get over there. Mm. What me do? Get Scout and ride to Corpus Christi. I understand there's a naval vessel still anchored there. Tell them you have reason to believe Juan Moros and his gang are going to make a getaway from the island on the Gulf side. Ah, Nico, it's not far. You be careful, Kim Sabi. Adios. Adios. After Tonto had left, the Lone Ranger, realizing the lagoon was too wide to swim, went to the grove and mounted silver. Then, returning to the sandy beach, he rode along for some distance. He rounded a point and saw a dilapidated boat landing, and beside it on the sand was an old flat bottomed boat, partly filled with water. <laughs> This would take a lot of bailing, but maybe with a piece of driftwood for a paddle, I could make it to the island. Worth a try, anyhow. The Lone Ranger led Silver back into the trees. Then, returning to the beach, he tipped the boat to empty it of water. And pulling a narrow board from the old dock for a paddle, he shoved the boat into the water and headed for the island, alternately paddling and bailing. <laughs> Later that morning, in a shack on the gulf side of the island, Juan and his men were preparing to leave to go aboard a small sailing vessel, which was anchored a short distance offshore. Did you get that stuff back on the ship, Dusty? Uh, what's the Russian? Packing up our things. I thought you said the ship won't put out till sundown. I want everything on board right away, then we'll go on the ship too, so as to be ready to leave in case anything happens. <laughs> but don't forget your fancy plume huh? hat back there in your bunk, Juan. So that would not do at all. I shall wear it to the ship so it will not get messed up in my pie. <laughs> hey, the captain out there will think an admiral's coming aboard, huh, Dusty? Yeah, there be so. There, now I am ready, senores. Uh, Tex and I have our packs. 
How about you, Dave? Yeah, I'm ready. You ready? All set. Then come on, we'll row out to the ship and wait for night time. Meantime, the Lone Ranger reached the island and cautiously made his way through the underbrush until he was in a position to see the shack and also the anchored ship a short distance from shore. As he reached his vantage point, Moros and the others were just getting into the rowboat. Mm, I was right. One of them is wearing a plumed hat. It's Juan Moros and his gang. I've got to get aboard that ship somehow and make sure it doesn't leave. The Lone Ranger waited in hiding for some time. Noon came and went. He could see the men moving about on the ship's deck for a while. Then he noticed only one standing at the stern and evidently intent upon scanning the waters of the gulf. The ship was broadside to the shore, and the Lone Ranger decided to make an attempt to swim to the bow of the ship and use the anchor chain to get aboard. He cautiously made his way to some tall reeds along part of the shore, then slipped into the water after hiding his boots and gun belt, but taking one gun with him. Here it goes. I managed to keep this gun dry somehow. Meantime, on board, Moros and the others lounged in the captain's cabin, waiting for the time to depart. It would suit me better, Capitan, for us to sail now. It's too risky, Moros. Don't forget there's contraband aboard. We won't sail until sundown unless we absolutely have to. All right. You are the boss of the ship. Uh, Stuffy in here. I'm going on deck with some air. I'll go with you. Yeah, what's the matter? Thought I saw somebody duck around the end of the cabin. I'll sneak along this side. Get your gun handy, you sneak around the other side. Now get going. Right. The Lone Ranger had made his way aboard the ship and had started alongside the structure that housed the forward cabin. Just as he heard the cabin door opening, he quickly ducked around the corner and waited, gun in hand. He was about to start again when a gun was poked into his back and Tex spoke. Reach, Buster. At that moment, Dusty stepped in front of the Lone Ranger. That golly, a masked hombre. Yeah, I got my gun at his back. Must have swum out here. His clothes are all wet. We'll take him into the cabin. Why don't I want to take that mask off him? See who he is. Why don't one of you do it now? Afraid? <laughs> Listen to him. I got him covered, Tex. Rip that mask off his mug. All right. I'll keep the mask. Hey, let's go. Up your gun, you. Like far I will. All right, take it. Oh. With a sudden shove, the Lone Ranger sent Tex sprawling against Dusty, and they both fell to the deck. That will stop you for a few minutes. As the two men fell, the Lone Ranger turned and ran, just as the lookout in the stern shouted. Dusty, Tex, what's happening? Mask man aboard, he tricked us. Yeah, he ran around the end of the cabin. Cut off the anchor! Hoist the sail! Hey, there's that mask man! He's got the ropes that pulls the sails out! Nothing's tight now! Amidst great excitement, the Lone Ranger appeared first one place, then another, with knife in hand, cutting vital ropes and causing dismay and confusion. As the naval vessel bore down upon them, some of the crew cut the anchor rope, and others managed to get one of the sails hoisted. Then another cry filled those aboard with greater dismay. The mask man! He's disabled the wheel! The ship moved out helplessly into the Gulf waters, and as the man of war came closer, the men began firing haphazardly. Then came a salvo of gunfire from the oncoming vessel. In the excitement, the masked man was momentarily forgotten, even by Juan Moros, until as the outlaw leader was about to go over the side, the Lone Ranger appeared beside him before he could go for his gun. You're not going anyplace, Moros. The masked hombre, it is you who disabled the ship. I'll face you. I won't do it. As the Lone Ranger's vicious blows began to wear him down, Juan looked around for help. But the others were too busy trying to fend off the boarding party from the man of war, which had come alongside. I'll get this over with. A terrific blow to the chin and one to the side felled Juan Moros. And he lay on the deck, out cold, the plumed hat beside him. At that moment, the battle ended as the sailors swarmed aboard. This must be the mask man the Indian told us about, Admiral. You said the Indian told us about That's right, Admiral. He said you were going to try to get to the island. <laughs> From some of the comments we've heard, you did a lot of damage aboard this ship for one man. I did what I could to keep him from setting sail. Well, by the way, I think this belongs to one of your fellow officers. What? Admiral, that's your plumed hat. Uh, and there's the outlaw who took it. Remarkable. But I never thought I'd engage in battle to get it back. That, uh, that man you knocked cold as we approached must be the notorious Moros. That's right, sir. You have the rest of his men among your prisoners. This ship was running in contraband. Yes, I'm sure of that. Your Indian friend and some of my men rode back to the point where he left you. He told me some of the gang were camped in the swamp. That's right, sir. I'll have a boat, Lord. We'll take you ashore across the lagoon. The 
Lone Ranger first retrieved his boots and gun belt from the island, then was taken ashore accompanied by the Admiral. Toto was waiting on the beach with Silver. Nearby, armed sailors stood waiting with the rest of the gang they'd captured in the swamp hideout. Thanks for bringing me ashore, Admiral. Looks like Toto and your men found the other outlaws. I'll have them in the horses taken by land to Corpus Christi. I can't tell you how much we appreciate it. Well, that's not necessary, Admiral. <laughs> that plumed hat had to be redeemed, you know. <laughs> Adios, sir. Adios. Goodbye, mister. Please. One, two, three. Enough. Out. <laughs> Imagine him being able to joke about that plumed hat after all he's been through. Uh, Shit, by the way, I, I don't even know who he is. I do, sir. The Indian told me. He's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.